Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Gulf Coast Texas High School Football Huddle brought to you by Citizens Medical Center. I'm your host, Chris Daly, and we have a great show for you this week. The Gulf Coast Texas High School Football Huddle is brought to you by Citizens Medical Center. Located in Victoria, Texas, it is an independent, community-based hospital dedicated to improving the health and wellness of South Texas. Citizens was founded in 1956 with a commitment to delivering quality health care in a personal manner. Today, Citizens is a 317-bed acute care hospital with over 1,200 employees and is recognized for its nationally accredited cardiology and stroke programs, emergency services, bariatric surgery, general surgery, orthopedics, urology, primary care, pulmonology, oncology, labor and delivery, rehabilitation, and wellness. And now they're known for bringing you the Gulf Coast Texas High School Football Huddle. We also need to give a shout out to another sponsor, Camacho Tractor and Equipment Repair. Paul Camacho and his staff specialize in tractors, zero-turn mowers. They're bad boy dealers, but they're also probably best known for their repair and maintenance. In fact, I had my bad boy mower. I took it up there. They did such a good job bringing it back to life. New blades, new uh, belts, cleaned everything up, got it running so nice. It, it is just night and day, the work they can do on your equipment. And they work on all kinds of tractors, all kinds of mowers. You can find them at 744 FM 1686 in Telfener, or call them, 361-652-5672. That's Paul Camacho, Camacho Tractor and Equipment Repair. A lot happening in the Gulf Coast in terms of Texas high school football. As weeks go, it was really a week of blowouts, a lot of really big blowouts, and uh, we'll talk about those with Mike Foreman from the Victoria Advocate, as well as some of the games coming up this week and how important they all are in terms of district standings and those ever-important playoff spots right after this. We also need to thank American Shield Roofing and Construction, your five-star local Aggie-owned and operated roofing and construction company serving both the greater Houston area and the Golden Crescent. They do residential, commercial, and metal roofing. They are also hail and windstorm roofing specialists. They do free inspections, super friendly service, and financing is available if you qualify. You can find them on the web at AmericanShieldRoofing.com. American Shield Roofing, again, that number, 361-343-7018. Hey, and when you're heading to one of these games up Highway 59, if you get between Wharton and El Campo, you'll see Junior's Texas Best Smokehouse. That's right. Uh, Gosh, they do such a good job with all kinds of smoked meats. They have brisket. They have barbecue there. You can get the best brisket sandwiches. Uh, But they have have everything. They have spices. They have rubs. They have, like I said, all the dried meats you want. They they have so many cool things. They even have a sausage that is macaroni and cheese sausage. It's the craziest thing ever. And it actually tastes really good. It surprised me. (laughs) But uh, go check them out. Like I said, it's on 59 between Warden and El Campo on the west side of the the freeway. You can also find them online and probably should do this first. Go to juniorsjerky.com and kind of look at all the things they have so you'll know exactly what you want on the way to the game. You can also reach them at 979-531-0888. That's Junior's Texas Best Smokehouse. As always, join me in welcoming Mike Foreman to the show. Mike, how are things today? Oh, going going okay, Chris. Uh, just getting ready for, believe it or not, week seven already. Yeah, no doubt. It goes fast, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, uh, I guess pretty much uh, 
everybody now should be in district play. Uh, I guess yeah. a few exceptions in private schools, but uh, you know it's getting down to where these games are uh, really meaningful. Oh, definitely. Let's let's go over the games that just happened, and and we'll start with the Victoria teams. East and West split. Uh, some pretty big scores in those ones. Yeah. I mean, uh, West had, uh, they started off slow. In fact, they actually spotted Moody a nine to nothing lead. Uh, and then, uh, they kind of got, got themselves back together and, uh, you know, went on and blew Moody out. Um, and then over on the other side, uh, you have Victoria East, uh, their defense is just, uh, uh, it's just it's not getting it done. I mean, this was the uh, fourth time in five games that they've given up 40 or more points, and uh, wow. not coincidentally, they've lost all four of those games. Hmm. Yeah, it's hard to win those. Yeah, so we'll see. I mean, West has uh, got a big one this week. It goes down to uh, Corpus Christi and plays Veterans Memorial. Uh, both those mm-hmm. teams are 2-0. and the winner will most likely come out of there tied with Miller for the district lead. Nice, nice. And and what is the story with East Bernard? I thought they had a chance in this one finally to get things going right, but but it wasn't even close either. No, and and that I mean that's I mean I guess we're just so used to East Bernard being so good that you know yeah. when this this happens it is shocking. I mean. I knew Ty Damon was going to have a good good team, and uh, their running back Joseph Dodds. I mean, they uh, he got hurt. I believe it was against Industrial, and yeah. uh, they kind of slow, you know, slowly working him back in. And he got back in there against East Bernard, and also their quarterback uh, Kale Russell, mm-hmm. um, and they're, they're, they have a receiver, Davis, that uh, is really good. So uh, offensively, they have some weapons. And uh, obviously, it was too much for East Bernard. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You mentioned industrial. We were both expecting them to be able to breathe a little bit with this game. And sure enough, it, w- it was a pretty lopsided win for them. Yeah, Industrial took care of business, and I, I would assume Industrial will take care of business again this week. That Aranza's pass is probably yeah. the uh, the worst team in that district. Um, so Industrial, but, uh, you know, they need to be getting it together because uh, you know what next week is, right? That's uh, Industrial yeah, and, and Ed. And yeah. that most. And they have Palacios this week, who Palacios has been putting up a lot of points. And their quarterback, Anthony White, he's a, he's a good athlete, he's a good passer. Uh, but whether or not um, I think Palacios is going to have a hard time uh, stopping it. But um, yeah. that, those two teams, uh, they seem headed for a showdown next week. Yeah, Definitely. Definitely, and you mentioned uh, stopping Edna. The team that did stop Edna uh, a while back there was Referio, and we expected a tough matchup with Three Rivers, but it looks like they're on different playing levels. Oh, yeah, there was, I was at that game. They, they, they dominated Three Rivers. Uh, I mean, offensively and defensively, they uh, mm-hmm. Referio is just, it just seems to be getting better with every game. I mean, yeah. uh, it's a young team, an experienced team, but a very talented team. And uh, the, some of the things I've noticed is uh, their front is getting better. Um, they're they're able to run the ball. Um, and defensively, I mean, they just they play good defense. The, uh, Three Rivers didn't have a first down until uh, there was like two minutes left in the first half. So uh, they totally dominated Three Rivers. Now, in, in fairness, too, Three Rivers is also a young team. And yeah. uh, I think Three Rivers next year could be pretty good, too. But uh, Refugio, I mean, they were just uh, – there was no match there. So, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting. I know Shiner, of course, played Bloomington and yeah. uh, easily handled Bloomington. And, um, you know, this week we have uh, – 
where Furio go into Skidmore and Shiner go in the Three Rivers and uh, Kennedy at Bloomington. But uh, it'd be interesting to see uh, how Shiner does against Three Rivers. Um, although I, you know, I don't like to get into this comparing scores and that yeah. kind of thing because every game is different and uh, a lot of things can happen. So, uh, but we're two weeks away, or actually after this week. We have uh, Refurio will be on its bye, and then after, and Shiner will play, and then the week after that is when Shiner and Refurio meet. And that's kind of the game that everyone's been kind of looking forward to. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And you mentioned not like wanting to compare scores. Uh, I agree with that completely because you see a team like Three Rivers, which was doing great, then it gets thumped by Refurio. They're going to be a lot more fired up for Shiner, so they'll probably play better. And it won't necessarily mean Shiner is that much worse. It's just they're different. (laughs) Right. They're different styles, too. You know, Shiner Shiner runs the ball. I mean, Refiro ran the ball against three rivers. They only threw for like 107 yards. I mean, uh, and they had, I think, one touchdown pass, which came on kind of a screen pass a little uh, flare pass to Kai Widmeyer, and he just took off and uh, mm-hmm. scored on that. But uh, they weren't throwing as much as usual. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I mean, obviously uh, I expect Dalton Brooks to have a good good night against Three Rivers, but uh, a lot of times it just depends. Um, you know, Shiner, if they don't break big plays, then the score might be uh, – might be closer, but that doesn't indicate right. that they're dominating. Right. I agree completely. Uh, and, and a game that you've mentioned for a couple of weeks now, kind of dreading for Yoakum, uh, turns <laughs> out that trip to Waco was not a good one. Now, uh, well, it was 21-14 at one point, and then I guess it got out of hand after that. But I'll tell you what, man, that uh, – both Yoakum and Houtsville open district, and they're going to have their hands full. Uh, you know, Yoakum's got to play Hitchcock, who's 5-0 and right now, and then uh, Houtsville has to play Columbus, who's 5-0. and So, uh, mm-hmm. And uh, Bo Robinson was telling me that uh, the Yoakum coach, that uh, he thought Hitchcock had the, the best athletes in the district. Um, and, you know, I think we've talked about this. They won the state seven on seven. So they're, they're very, very talented. Um, Yoakum's playing better, but, uh, you know, we'll see if they can match up with Hitchcock. I'm really curious about that. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if Hitchcock is the team that we saw against Referio at the opening of the season. Cause that seemed like a much better team. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, I believe so. And I I think Hitchcock uh, has kind of gotten better as the season gone along. Just like everyone, they they played a Saturday game against Salado last mm-hmm. week, and uh, I think it was in Bryan. And they uh, if that was a close game, but they pulled it out. And um, but Columbus, meanwhile. Columbus has just been been annihilating people. Their games haven't even really been close. And so, uh, you know, uh, Columbus, uh, depending on what happens this week, uh, you could have uh, Columbus and Hitchcock uh, fighting it out for that district championship. Yeah, definitely. Uh, So so what games are you – I guess circling on the map for this week that uh, are real important ones for the districts. Well, I, uh, one I'm looking at is Hearn at Flatonia. Um, yeah. Hearn had a big win over Schulenburg, and of course by now I guess you've heard what's happened up in Schulenburg. Uh, yeah. Their, their coach, uh, Walt Brock, was put on uh, administrative leave after, uh, well, I haven't got the full story, but apparently there was uh, some some heated words between coaches on the sideline, and it uh, carried over into the locker room at halftime. Mm. And uh, whatever happened, I don't know, but it was enough for the uh, for the, the for, for the superintendent to take action. So right. uh, 
by the way, uh, the, the interim head coach is Gilbert Price, who uh, a lot of people may remember was the quarterback on China's 1986 state championship team and also mm-hmm. he played at uh, Texas State, which I think at that time was Southwest Texas under mm-hmm. uh, Dick Francione. So uh, Gilbert's now the interim head coach, and they have a bye week. But Flatonia and um, Hearn will play in uh, – I think if Flatonia wins this game, I think it's going to win district. Uh, Flatonia has been playing really well. Um, and, uh, they have, you know, their only loss this year was to Houseville. So, uh, mm-hmm. I think, uh, this is a big game for Flatonia. If it can win, I would look for them to, to win that district, uh, championship. Um, that's I, really as far, and then of course the game I'll be covering, uh, Bay City and El Campo. Uh, yeah, that that's one that jumps out to me is is a yeah. very important one in that district. Yeah, it's of course the state's oldest continuous rivalry, and uh, yep, it's been dominated by El Campo. They won 15 in the last 16. Uh, El, Bay City won in 2018, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, this year, it's very interesting because uh, El Campo, even though it's reeled off, uh, you know, I think three straight wins and they open district with a win over Navasota, they're not the same team as it was last year. No. And, uh, no. and neither is Bay City, and that's a good thing for Bay City. Bay City is a lot better. And I'm going to tell you, its defense is for real. Bay City has a tremendous defense. Uh, their issue has been offensively. They just can't sustain drives and they turn the ball over. But uh, and that's what got them last week. They lost 17-9 to uh, Navasota. Yeah. But um, I think uh, what 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 to look for in this game is, um, is uh, how Bay City uh, kind of contains uh, El Campo's offense. Uh, Will Ruben Owens be able to, you know, break free for some big runs? Or uh, if Bay City can contain them, I think uh, they have a chance to win this game. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way you are on on talking about their defense because it's so – actually, both those teams last week, anytime a team scores 17 and wins is a very, very rare day these days. Yeah, you're right. You don't have too many. And in fact, uh, if you look, Bay City Open District with a seven to nothing win over Brazosport. Yeah. And we, you know, I mean, usually unless it's a game where a really good team against a team that's not so good, you mm-hmm. don't see too many shutouts. And uh, especially, I can't remember Brazosport. Usually, Brazosport scores a lot of points. So, right. uh, you know, that was impressive. So uh, Bay City's playing defense, uh, and the question is, will they be able to, to contain Ruben Owens and get their, you know, get its offense and enough, you know, to score enough to give them a chance to win? Yeah, and and what about fifteen four A? They're starting district this week, so it's a clean slate. Uh, nobody is running away score wise or or record wise. The the top ones are three and two. Uh, yeah. So, so what do you think there is going to happen? That I, I'm really curious of that. I'm I'm curious to see Calhoun. I know goes up to Lavernia, and mm-hmm. uh, of course, Calhoun, I mean, gosh, they're old five. I mean, uh, Lavernia is three and two, but uh, I I just keep thinking that Calhoun's going to be better before the season's over. Um, I guess we'll find out. And of course, Bevo, um, you know, Bevo will stay ranked until yeah. they uh, unfortunately gave up 82 points to Quero. And uh, well, of course, they lost to Somerset, and then they gave up 82 to Quero. But Bevo's right. not. A, I think that district with Rockport and everyone. Uh, I think it's a very even district, and uh, I'm real curious to see. I mean, uh, I just. You know, I, I maybe it's just, uh, you know, it's kind of like East Bernard. You know, we can't, it's hard to believe East Bernard is where it's at. And the same thing right, yeah, but, with Calhoun. I mean, you know, those two programs have been so good for so long that when they have a down year, you're kind of wondering what the heck is going on. 
Right. And, and we don't know that it's a down year really because of who they've been playing. So, so it may yeah. be, maybe they start their streak now. I remember West Orange Stark probably 10 years ago, uh, was supposed to be state ranked, started off like 0 and 4, 0 and 5 or something, and then went all the way, won a state championship. You know, the other thing is too is, um, in 2018, when Quarrel won state, they played uh, – the Gobblers played the first four games without Jordan Whittington. Right. And so he did not play until the final non-district game. And, uh, you know, you don't know what injuries people have. So that yeah. could change things a lot. So, uh, yeah, we'll find out. I, I mean, I think it's uh, – Calhoun's pretty young. or I don't know about young, but they're inexperienced. And I think uh, Richard Whitaker was maybe expecting a possibility of a down year. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they just always seem to find a way. And, uh, you know, now's the time. I mean, uh, you know, you, you're 0-5. If you, so what? You know, let's say you go 5-5, and then all of a sudden, you know, things look a whole lot different. Yeah, exactly. And, and in a small district like that, you know, a couple wins, you really have to work to miss the playoffs in such a small district. Right. When you have six teams, basically you have to win two games. And yeah. uh, that's really what you're looking at. And, uh, you know, of course you want to get a better position, you know, in the playoff. But, uh, yeah, you usually can get in uh, in a 16 district or – or even a five team where you only have to win one game to basically right. get it. That's what, you know, you look at Houtsville and uh, Houtsville, Yoakum, Columbus, uh, Hitchcock, and Hempstead. Because basically, uh, yeah, you win one game, you're probably going to be in the playoffs. So, uh, yeah. And then, uh, and then you, you mentioned you mentioned seeding. That's kind of a hit and miss, too, because right. depending on which district you're matched up against, Maybe it is better to go against their top team. You know, sometimes it is. You're right, too. Uh, you know, I know coaches will look at that. I mean, obviously, you're going to try, or at least 99% of the time, the coach is going to try and win a game. But right. uh, I've heard of some instances where it's it's hard to say a team threw a game, but right. uh, they kind of, it's very suspicious, let's put it that way. But, uh, you know, and in, in those cases, you know they're looking at the playoff bracket. So, uh, yeah. yeah, but, uh, you know, a lot of things can happen. You just don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I think, for instance, like uh, I was talking to some coaches about the Refurio Shiner district, uh, if it would matter whether you went out first or second, and basically, they were telling me that first place, you wouldn't have to play a district champion until probably the third round, where if you finish second, you might have to play district champion in the second round. Right. But but who knows? You know, the second place team you play could be better than the first place team. So you just, you never really know about that. And if you start looking around at that, you can get in trouble. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, all that matters is you make it to the postseason, and then you right. try to win every game. <laughs> That's right. I mean, it's like you said. You know, you can go ten and zero, but if you lose that first game, you don't feel very good about it. Yeah, I was uh, talking to Ken Purcell. We when we were writing our book, and he said that was the worst season he ever had, and the worst season a high school coach in Texas can have is a 10 and one season yeah, yeah. where they go undefeated until the playoffs and then they go home. <laughs> yeah, I know. that's, uh, that's not what you want. Um, you know, it's kind of, you know, cause everybody kind of measures you on, uh, what you do in the postseason. That's, that's true. And, and, you know, you've got teams like Columbus sitting at six and O right now, but none of uh, them counted. <laughs> none of them mattered. <laughs> yeah, really, that's true. I mean, it's nice to be 6 known. It's nice to be ranked. But, uh, you know, like you said, it's no guarantee of anything. So, uh, you know, it's what matters is what you do in district and how you do in the playoffs. Definitely. All right, any other games that uh, 
stand out? Not really this week. I think, uh, you know, everything is, uh, like we talked about, um, is pretty much, we've got some team starting district, but, uh, I think those are the main, main games that, uh, people are looking at. I know Quero goes over to Giddings, but, uh, yeah. you know, nobody in that district other than Quero, um, I still think LaGrange has a lot of good athletes, but, uh, nobody in that district has really shown themselves. So, uh, you know, if Quero plays up to its capability, I, I would expect the uh, Gobblers to win that district. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. All righty. Well, uh, where where did you say we'll see you this week? I'll be in El Campo for Bay City El, oh, El right. Campo. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, uh, I think, the 119th and 103rd consecutive. So uh, I always t- I always tell people that I like to go to that game because it's the series is actually older than I am, so uh, <laughs> makes me feel like not so old sometimes. When it's I getting like harder it. and harder to find those series. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm telling you, it sure is. So, uh, but I, I love that. It's that's one of the great rivalries. I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, you have uh, Warden County, Matagorda County, you have Red El Campo, Blue Bay City. It's just, mm-hmm. uh, there have been some great players in that game, you know. So it's a lot of fun to go watch yeah, that game. Definitely. Well, enjoy that. And uh, as always, Mike, thanks for joining me on the show. Okay, Chris. Well, you good luck this week and uh, take care. Listening to the Lone Star Gridiron Sports Network. Hey, football fans! Christmas is right around the corner. We have the perfect gift for your high school football fan in your life: Friday Night Legends, the board game. With Friday Night Legends, you can play the greatest high school teams of all time against each other based on their real stats. That means you can play the 1989 Odessa Permian Panthers of Friday Night Lights fame against the 2017 Mater Day team and really see who's the better team. Or what about Peyton Manning's Newman High School in New Orleans against Trevor Lawrence's Cartersville, Georgia team? There are thousands of teams in the library from all over the United States. Get your copy of Friday Night Legends at BoardGameLegends.com and be the hero of Christmas morning. Hey, I want to thank you guys for tuning in, and I want to thank Citizens Medical Center for bringing you the Gulf Coast Texas High School Football Huddle. Please take a second to share this show with your friends and family. Like and subscribe on any major podcast platform, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, wherever you find podcasts, you will find the Gulf Coast Texas High School Football Huddle. I'm your host, Chris Daly, and I'm hoping to see you at the game.